Congresswoman Bush. Mm -hmm. St. Louis, and I thank you, Chairwoman, uh, Madam Chairwoman, for holding. We're ready to yield to you now for five minutes. Are you able to? Can you hear me? Very well. Thank you so much for making okay. the effort. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much for, um, for holding this hearing. Uh, St. Louis is all too familiar with the daily drumbeat of gun violence that claims lives and leaves loved ones with empty chairs. Like Newtown and Valde, everyone in our community has been traumatized in some way by gun violence, especially young people. Today, I want to lift up two extraordinary young Black women from St. Louis who have borne the cost of gun violence. The first is Alexandria Bell, who was killed in a shooting at Central Visual and Performing Arts High School in October. Alexandria was 15. She loved art. She was an energetic and gifted dancer. She was always smiling and she was a ray of sunshine to everyone who knew her. The other young woman I want to uplift is Veronica Russell, a, a, a senior at a CVP. After this shooting, Veronica channeled her trauma and outrage into a brilliant letter detailing how Missouri's absurd, absurd gun laws are enabling more gun deaths. In that letter, she wrote that CVPA students are beyond hurt, beyond shocked, beyond traumatized. And she wrote that at CVPA, that sanctuary has been taken from us. It is devastating to think about the toll of gun violence in our country, especially on young people. Dr. Guerrero, as a medical provi provider who saw firsthand the consequences of the Uvalde shooting, what policies do you think are needed to address our students' mental health needs, whether they're survive, they've survived a school shooting or just are terrified of ongoing, uh, 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 of going to school because they believe that they may not come home? Well, uh, first and foremost, I think that, especially in the rural area like Uvalde is, uh, accessibility, um, having the availability of those services for anyone that wants them, um, could it be even like as a, with dialing a number, how we have the national hotline now for suicide, something to that extent where someone can get the help they need without having to search for it. Um, and also with somehow getting that help without having the stigma of, of uh, reaching out for, for mental health. Um, I'm both into the problem. Thank you. Ms. Melchano, thank you for sharing your story. Can you tell us more about what going to school in Newtown has been like for you and your classmates since the Sandy Hook shooting? Um, Newtown is an incredibly strong community. We're still fighting to this day. Recently, we've been pushing for an assault weapons ban. I, along with other members of Junior Newtown Action Alliance, We've been calling on Senator Schumer to push this bill up to the floor for a vote. It's something that's on Gen Z's priority list. We have been in the front lines of this issue for all we can remember. And we know that we're far from a perfect world and it's not realistic to, for every gun to be taken off of the streets, but that doesn't mean we can't do anything. And we just keep sitting here and watching all these shootings and people are dying every day and it's hard to watch Congress stand divided when the majority of Americans want change. Thank, thank you and thank you for sharing your story with us and thank you for uh, absolutely helping our country. Every life lost to gun violence, every moment spent in fear is both a moral failure and a policy failure. But the answer is not more incarceration. We're not going to prosecute our way out of this. That approach ends with black and brown people being unfairly targeted. 81% of those convicted on federal gun charges in the Eastern District of Missouri are black. So we understand that that's not going to solve. We understand it won't solve the gun violence epidemic. It will not save lives. Ultimately, we need to adopt a public health approach. We need, common, like we just heard, common sense reforms, like requiring universal background check, checks, raising the age, enacting the red flag laws, and banning assault weapons. And we need to defeat the NRA and its cronies who profit off of flooding our streets with guns. Unfortunately, right now, we are at the mercy of an anti-democratic, anti-black filibuster in the Senate and shameless Republicans who fill their, their campaign coffers with NRA blood money. But the fight goes on 
and we will not rest until we have ended this crisis in St. Louis and in every other part of this country. Thank you, Madam Chair. And before I yield back, well, never mind. Thank you. Congresswoman Bush is a trained nurse, and so I want to thank all of the health professionals who sadly have to confront this issue. As I indicated,